Hi, today I'm going to talk about how to make this Magic the Gathering deck box with a gold leaf guild symbol. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And my project for today are these Magic the Gathering deck boxes. Now this is the Izzet Guild, this is the symbol, that's what my son plays, and I do Selesnya. So I made the two boxes for us. The dimensions are the same as the standard deck box, but this is made out of wood. It's, the parts are cut on a laser cutter at my local makerspace. I designed it all in Adobe Illustrator, and this symbol on the top is done in variegated metal leaf, a technique I just learned recently, and I'll talk about how I did that as well. It's the standard box design. It has the inner box that you can use to hold your dice, or cards will fit in here as well, and cards fit to the front and the back. So I'll talk about how I designed this and made them in this episode. I have another project where I make a magic card box designed to hold all your magic cards, but I wanted something I could take with me to game night. I started with a top-down layout of how the boxes would fit together. I have the top going over the bottom and an inner box. And then, of course, I need to also know the height of each of these pieces. I also found two nice, clean black and white images of the guild symbols so I could run an image trace and have the vector engraving for the two symbols. I'll provide a link to the in-depth video I've done about how to do this kind of standard box construction. The top has two long rails inside that provide one inch clearance from the top of the cards to the top of the box. Here's the bottom, and the sides of the bottom are actually taller than the sides of the top. The cards will stick up a little bit above this so that they're easy to read and sort through. And of course the exterior dimensions of the bottom fit just inside the inner dimensions of the top. Here's the inner box, and it's designed to fit just inside of the bottom, but it's also got sides that when it's in the box will be, the top of these sides will be flush with the top of the bottom of the box. The last step is to transfer these to cut sheets for the laser cutter, so the wood is 12 inch by 12 inches. I lay it out as efficiently as possible, and then this is the special sheet for the metal leafing. I have to pre-paint the top of this with the gloss black and then I cover it with special low-tack masking tape. And the laser cutter does the engraving first, as you can see, and then it does the cutting. I have this firmly clamped in place because I'm using it as my jig. I use some sticky putty here to pull the pieces out and then I move them over to a table where I can do my work. The first step is to weed out the masking and the place where I want the metal leaf to go. Here are the materials I'm using, and I got them all on Amazon for about $7 a piece. I use the Speedball Metal Leaf Adhesive, some imitation rose gold metal leaf, and Cosmic Shimmer Gilding Flakes. This is the autumn leaves color combination. So the next step is to apply the Speedball sizing with a foam brush, and uh, then you use a heat gun to help it dry faster. When it goes from white to clear, it's done. I'm applying a single sheet of the imitation gold leaf to the izzet lid, and I'm putting the gilding flakes on the selesnya lid. The gilding flakes in particular are pretty messy, so it's helpful to have the vacuum and <laughs> even an extra hand when you're working with it. I need to brush away enough excess leaf to be able to see that everything is firmly adhered to the outline of the symbol underneath. When I feel confident that both symbols are completely covered, I put them back into the jig, and now I just rerun the engraving part of the program. I don't need to run the cut again. And what this is doing is cutting the edges of the gold leaf so I have a perfect outline. Now I can remove the masking, including carefully weeding away the masking on the interior of the design. And this is the result. It's beautiful. But the gilding flakes seem to be more forgiving of the tiny imperfections of the process. The last step is to cut all the other parts out of the wood. I decided to paint the inside before assembly because I knew it would be hard to spray paint in there once they were put together. 
I put a couple coats of clear coat over the lids and then I protected this one with my low tack masking tape. And then I elevated it and painted the back side. While that was drying, I did a dry fit of all the other components to make sure I had the right pieces going together. I'm using the other lid as a stand-in here for the top. And this is important to do because these pieces are so similar in shape and size, it's very easy to get confused. I started with the easiest box, which is the inner box. I use these granite samples to help hold things square and hold them together while I work and while they dry. I clean out any glue drips on the inside and then I put a block on and let it dry. Now I'm working on the bottom. I go through the same process. I build it upside down and then uh, carefully turn it over and clean out the inside and weight that down as well. At this point I glued those rails on the sides of the top so that that would be dry by the time I was ready to assemble the top. This is what keeps the lid from closing too far down. When they're dry, I can assemble the top, and then I do the very last step, which is to spray the outside black. And of course, I leave the masking on the lid while I do that. And as in any project, I learned a lot doing this the first time that helped me do the second box better. I redid the lid using the gilding flakes because we liked that better. I made the bottom a little bit smaller so that it wouldn't be wearing away the paint as I took the lid on and off. The masking tape removed some of the clear coat, so I switched to a really low-tech transfer paper, and I painted both sides before assembly. And here's the final result after those changes. It's absolutely beautiful. The fit is perfect. And most importantly, my son loves it. I have lots of other projects for gaming and gamers. If you're interested, please subscribe to my channel.